Ladies and gents, from Rusi Ji Reaction, and this is the coronavirus explained and what you should do by the channel Cos Gazette in a nutshell. Yeah, I know why I didn't react to this one sooner since it's a big, massive topic that we are going on today. Yeah, it's just you know it's been over a year and still a massive issue. So yeah, coronavirus. Basically, this is just that you know uh, SARS virus, MERS virus, is that called? And this is you know. Uh, basically coronavirus covid i think this is uh, just like the influenza somewhat so yeah what what you know i don't know much about coronavirus but what you know panics me a bit is this virus is not as dangerous as some of the virus you know we have had in the past uh, this this has a good recovery rate those did not and still this crippled us you know scared us at the level you can't even think so imagine if something like black death a new strand of black death basically spread it like this the world would have been so screwed so yeah that was this one yeah of course Gustav will you know I guess cover this in very great detail I already got a few Kurs Gustav videos already if you haven't seen them check out the cast of the playlist check out the other playlist too, real life flow, CGP great, real life floor CGP great internet and things like that uh, check out the link in the description with all of my other videos and yeah let's watch this one and remember people, this Kurs Gustav video it might get blocked so I would put check out box there but I guess we'll see in December 2019, the Chinese authorities notified the world that a virus was spreading through their communities. In the following months, it spread to other countries, with cases doubling within days. This virus is the severe acute respiratory syndrome-related coronavirus 2 that causes... Yes, SARS. RC2. That should have been the name. SARS RC2. It's the disease called COVID-19 and that yeah. everyone simply calls coronavirus. What actually happens when it infects a human and what should we all do? Yeah, I think SARS, MERS and now I think COVID all are part of coronavirus chain, I guess. There are more than that, right? I don't remember what. A virus is really just a hull around genetic material and a few proteins, arguably not even a living thing. It can only make more of itself by entering a living cell. Corona may spread via surfaces, but it's still uncertain how long it can survive on them. Its main way of spreading seems to be droplet infection, when people cough or if you touch someone who's ill and then your face, say rubbing your eyes or nose. The virus starts its journey here and then hitches a ride as a stowaway deeper into the body. Its destinations are the intestines, the spleen or the lungs, where it can have the most dramatic effect. Even just a few coronaviruses can cause quite a dramatic situation. The lungs are lined with billions of epithelial cells. These are the border cells of your body, lining your organs and mucosa, waiting to be infected. Corona connects to a specific receptor on its victim's membranes to inject its genetic material. The cell, ignorant of what's happening, executes the new instructions, which are pretty simple, copy and reassemble. It fills up with more and more copies of the original virus until it reaches a critical point and receives one final order, self-destruct. The cell sort of melts away, releasing new corona particles, ready to attack more cells. The number of infected cells grows exponentially. After about 10 days, millions of body cells are infected and billions of viruses swarm the lungs. The virus has not caused too much damage yet, but Corona is now going to release a real beast on you, your own immune system. The immune system, while there to protect you, can actually be pretty dangerous to yourself and needs tight regulation. And as immune cells pour into the lungs to fight the virus, corona infects some of them and creates confusion. Cells have neither ears nor eyes. They communicate mostly via tiny information proteins called cytokines. Nearly every important immune reaction is controlled by them. Corona causes infected immune cells to overreact and yell bloody murder. In a sense, it puts the immune system into a fighting frenzy and sends way more soldiers than it should, wasting its resources and causing damage. Two kinds of cells in particular... Let me get this straight. So this virus doesn't just attack your cells inside, inside you and destroy them when immune system comes. It also attacks them, make them go into frenzy and, you know, basically make them go all crazy, I guess. Damn, that is such a specific d damage. It is ridiculous to see how that works, man.
Oh my god, that's just effed up. This is why people have this pneumonia symptoms because of this. Wreak havoc. First, neutrophiles, which are great at killing stuff, including ourselves. As they arrive in their thousands, they start pumping out enzymes that destroy as many friends as enemies. The other important type of cells that go into a frenzy are killer T cells, which usually order infected cells to commit controlled suicide. Confused as they are, they start ordering healthy cells to kill themselves too. The more and more immune cells arrive, the more damage they do and the more healthy lung tissue they kill. This might get so bad that it can cause permanent irreversible damage that leads to lifelong disabilities. In oh God. So our immune system, yeah, I've, see, I've seen this in lots of cases. That is such an alarming thing that our immune system is great, obviously, but can also just go haywire like this and start attacking your own self. Lots of time people die because of immune system just went all crazy. This is why, you know, genetic engineering will be so good. We would be able to, you know, basically uh, tell immune system how to target things better rather than just going crazy and attack everything. That is so effed up and, you know, this virus is as really effed up, isn't it? They know how to survive. They know they, they are in you. So, you know, they evolved in a way. So, you know, they basically makes your own defense system go haywire. So it starts attacking its own self. In most cases, the immune system slowly regains control. It kills the infected cells, intercepts the viruses trying to infect new ones, and cleans up the battlefield. Recovery begins. The majority of people infected by corona will get through it with relatively mild symptoms. But many cases become severe or even critical. We don't know the percentage because not all cases have been identified, but it's safe to say that there is a lot more than with the flu. In more severe cases, millions of epithelial cells have died, and with them, the lung's protective lining is gone. That means that the alveoli, tiny air sacs via which breathing occurs, can be infected by bacteria that aren't usually a big problem. Whoa. Patients get pneumonia, respiration becomes hard or even fails, and patients need ventilators to survive. The immune system has... Forever? That's not recordable, right? Holy shit, so that's a permanent damage. I had no idea about that. This is way too scary, man. I can't, I can't even, you know, process, you know, how the last year has went for the entire world. I, was, I remember watching, you know, some of the videos in Italy where, you know, somebody just put a video like his sister was literally dead for days in a bed and, you know, nobody came to pick her up and he was, he couldn't, he couldn't leave the house. There was a lockdown. So it was such an effed up time, this one. I mean, you know, even right now, even with all this effed upness, we are still can't process what big event this was. And after one, two, three, even five decades later, how people will see this event. This is so effed up, man. ...has fought at full capacity for weeks and made millions of antiviral weapons. And as thousands of bacteria rapidly multiply, it is overwhelmed. They enter the blood and overrun the body. If this happens, death is very likely. The coronavirus is often compared to the flu, but actually, it's much more dangerous. While the exact death what? rate is hard to pin down during an ongoing pandemic, we know for sure that it's much more contagious and spreads faster than the flu. Uh, flu, you mean, uh, you're, you're not talking about influenza, right? Because I thought influenza was, uh, no, not influenza, Spanish flu. So it's the strand of influenza. I think he's talking about flu as an influenza, your common influenza. But uh, Spanish flu was much dangerous than Corona, right? I'm pretty sure it was. But one thing about Corona is you can't detect it until it's very late. And that's what makes it dangerous because it can spread easily. I, I guess it, it takes a week to detect Corona or something, symptoms of Corona. And by then you probably would have infected a lot of people. That's what made this virus much dangerous. Because SARS and MERS, you know, they, they, they came and they got contained in their own area. Like I say, MERS, I think Middle Eastern uh, Respiratory, something like that, was in the Middle East. Never, I think, never got out of Middle East. So no, none of us even realized it. But this one takes a week uh, to detect. So that's why it spread all around the world. There are two futures for a pandemic like Corona, fast and slow. Which future we will see depends on how we all react to it in the early days of the outbreak. A fast pandemic will be horrible and cost many lives. A slow pandemic will not be remembered by the history books. 
The worst case scenario for a fast pandemic begins with a very rapid rate of infection because there are no countermeasures in place to slow it down. Why is this so bad? In a fast pandemic, many people get sick at the same time. If the numbers get too large, healthcare systems become unable to handle it. There aren't enough resources like medical staff or equipment like ventilators left to help everybody. People will die untreated. And as more healthcare workers get sick themselves, the... Oh God, this is what happened, didn't it? This is what I, I, I was just t telling about that story from Italy. People are just dying and nobody was there to help them. Ah, uh, this is what happened. Because it, it wasn't slow, let's be honest, you know, lots of people got infected really fast in just span of year. And it is kind of fast and slow because it's not going away either. It's still here. So this is just effed up. What he's saying here, you know, is I think a bit more worse than it happened because he is not taking into account all the lockdowns that happened. But without lockdown, God, this would have been such a so bad thing. Capacity of healthcare systems falls even further. If this becomes the case, then horrible decisions will have to be made about who gets to live and who doesn't. Whoa. The number of deaths rises significantly in such a scenario. To avoid this, the world, that means all of us, needs to do what it can to turn this into a slow pandemic. A pandemic is slowed down by the right responses, especially in the early phase, so that everyone who gets sick can get treatment and there's no crunch point with overwhelmed hospitals. Since we don't have a vaccine for corona, we have to socially engineer our behavior to act like a social vaccine. This simply... Yeah, the vaccine we have today right now, I don't have much information on that, but I'm pretty sure that's uh, some form of immunity booster, right? So basically, you know, I think most people, like he said, would, would survive from corona. But after that, the immune system damage that happens and all those, the common bacteria that we don't get sick with overwhelms us and kills us. That probably won't happen because of this vaccine. So yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, I remember, you know, watching uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson on Stephen Colbert a year ago, where he says this is a massive global scale experiment in a sense that will people listen to scientists. That was the experiment. And no, no, people did not listen to scientists. This is so after up, man means two things not getting infected and not infecting others although it sounds trivial the very best thing you can do is to wash your hands soap is actually a powerful tool the coronavirus is encased in what is basically a layer of fat soap breaks that fat apart and leaves it unable to infect you it also makes your hands slippery and with the mechanical motions of washing viruses are ripped away to do it properly, wash your hands as if you've just cut up some jalapenos and want to put in your contacts next. The next thing is social distancing, which is not a nice experience, but a nice thing to do. This means no hugging, no handshakes. If you can stay at home, stay at home to protect those who need to be out for society to function, from doctors to cashiers or police officers. You depend on all of them. They all depend on you to not get sick. On a larger level, there are quarantines, which can mean different things from travel restrictions or actual orders to stay at home. There quarantines are not great to experience and certainly not popular, but they buy us and especially the researchers working on medication and vaccination crucial time. So if you are put under okay. quarantine, you should- Medical staff, I, you know, I don't know which clips I saw, but you know, it was from a busy hospital where, you know, Basically, these doctors were literally trembling. Their hands were shaking by, you know, removing the mask because they, was, they were watching things that was just way too much, way too much to take in. And they were overwhelmed by all these things. Trying to save people at the early times, you know, at the start of this pandemic, you know, the recovery rate was not that good. So they're trying to save people and the people just die left and right. And to, a, you know, a doctor, that would be so... Yeah, so, you know, that's really effed up for all this you know, medical personnel and people like that, this was so effed up. Cops too, man. Cops, basically everybody of us was scared and inside the house where cops had to be outside trying to stop people and force people to go away. You should understand why and respect it. None of this is fun, but looking at the big picture, it is a really small price to pay. Yeah, the it's question not about how fun. pandemics end depends on how they start. If they start fast with a steep slope, they end badly. 
If they start slow with a not-so-steep slope, they end okayish. And in this day and age, it really is in all of our hands. Literally and figuratively. A huge thanks to the experts who helped us on short notice with this video. Especially our world in data. The yeah, coronavirus. This this was you know this was uploaded last March, so clearly he had you know he he didn't see lots of things that happen afterwards. At at the time of making this video, but yeah, lockdown basically it was I think it was a fast one. I'm pretty sure it was a fast one. Lots of people died, you know, spread out way too fast. Our cases rose up like ridiculous. Yeah, and he says it's not gonna end. Well, if that happens, yeah, that's not really assuring, is it? Yeah, the, let's just say the immunity booster vaccines we have now, that is such a great option to minimize, extremely minimize all the deaths. So, you know, and people are just, you know, fighting, like, I don't trust it. That's the, that's the shit I, don't, I hate about my own generation right now. All the people doesn't trust science. How the fuck can you live in your homes? use satellites for everything, use your light, use machines, and at the same time say, I don't trust scientists. Live in a cave if you don't want to trust scientists, man. Just take your damn vaccine. All right, people, that was Coronavirus Explained by Kuz Gazar in a nutshell. If you like my reaction, do like and subscribe. Check out the reaction. I did this link in the description. Check out the cast, follow the playlist. Check out the end cards, and I'll see you next time.